Hi everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this rather lengthy video, we're going to be talking about network options inside Darkroom Pro and Core. And more than likely, we're going to uh, break it up into two different parts. Just the basic, this is how you set up a network, and then we're also going to do some fiddling around with printers and uh, different configurations that aren't necessarily directly supported, but a pretty cool workaround. So that'll probably be the second part. But first, what we're going to do is just kind of get a basic understanding of what you can do and what you probably shouldn't do whenever you're networking um, Darkroom Core, using it as a standalone, uh, using it as multiple cores, or using Pro as a server. So let's go ahead and jump right in and learn a little bit about networking with Darkroom Core and Pro. Okay, so I've uh, put together kind of a little slideshow of different options that we can kind of have. And this is probably where most people start off with. So if you're curious, if you're about to get into Core and Pro, or you're looking at um, the different options, Pro is not necessary for most users entering in. It is going to be used as a server. So where I would recommend starting with is Darkroom Core for your event photography or studio photography workflow. And you can kind of see it's pretty basic that you capture images, uh, typically tethered. You can do it untethered and import, and then you're gonna edit, um, and you can use the cell station and then print. So it's made to work with a camera and a printer. So the next option you can do as you start to expand, and there's two different ways you can go. Let's say you want to add, um, another core you have a larger event let's say it's the easter bunny you have two different easter bunny set uh, setups uh typically you don't want to do this with santa claus because you don't want to have two different santa clauses in the same place but this is a uh a setup where you would have two different completely separate stations um they are not going to share information from one to the other it's just going to be it's essentially one setup times two so the next option would be to actually add on a server computer. And this is where Darkroom Pro comes in. It's going to house all of the information, the photos, the templates, and it's going to manage the, the printer output and just house everything and distribute that information to and from core. So you can see in this setup, we have a, a server with three different printers hooked up and, um, a capture station an editing station or a sales station and you can have all three capture stations and then you go to the server and that's where they collect the money and make the print you can create the order from the client so take the picture and create the order and then they just go to the server to uh, collect the money and print now darkroom doesn't have any type of um, point of sale system built into it there um, it, you can do invoices but for credit cards and those type of things you would have a separate uh, point of sale system so this is where you're getting into darkroom pro this is where i'd really suggest you have one client and you want to then share information so really the next step is one client one server and then the server can actually be used as a workstation just like the client but the main thing is the printers have to be connected to the server so the next on our list so in this situation, you can see that the printers are actually not connected to the server. And one of the things you know about <clears throat> uh, Darkroom server is the printers have to be connected to the server. So how do we go about having a printer connected to a sales station? And that's what we're going to talk about in a second. We're going to learn how we can connect the printer to the sales station. It's still going to go through the server, but we're going to be the trick there is using a shared windows printer so we can't use any of the directly supported printers uh options but if we're printing all the same size we should be fine with a shared windows printer i'm going to show you how to do that in uh part two last thing i want to talk about is what you don't want to do and i see this quite often that um either the house the photos folder on this computer an external hard drive or this computer and then they're sharing the same information on two different cores and the reason why you don't want to do this, there's a couple reasons. One, 
because they're sharing the same orders folder inside the photos folder or your X drive, you don't know where that print's gonna come out, whether it's gonna come out of this printer or if it's gonna come out of this printer because they're both seeing the same information. So one can steal it and the other one doesn't have it. Um, but more importantly than that, just from the chaos that can come from that is um, data corruption because you have two different computers accessing possibly the same files at the same time you can corrupt data uh, through Windows file sharing errors um, that's where Darkroom Pro comes in to manage that to help avoid those type of uh, major failures where you lose information so I do every so often I'll see somebody with this type of setup and I always strongly suggest against it because if you call and say hey Eugene I know you told me not to do this but this is what I've been doing I have lost uh, information I'll feel bad for you but there's not really much I can do um, so that is something you don't want to do share a photos folder with two different core computers uh, unless you you want to have a bad day so that's my two cents on that <clears throat> So now that we have a little overview and what we want to try to avoid, let's see how we would set up the actual network. I have a pro computer and I'm actually logged into it remotely. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is make sure that my versions are the same. This is another good way to uh, lose data or corrupt data is have different versions because one uh, maybe on a little bit older version and it comes across something it doesn't recognize and that can cause an error so make sure your version and your build number are identical so there's my server this is my client and uh, I'll do my best if uh, what I'm gonna do in just a second is I'm gonna enlarge this so you know whenever um, you can see this green background I'm on the client uh, uh, but always look at the top you can always tell whether I'm the server or the client it can get a little confusing I'm sorry I don't know any better way to, to do uh, I wish I could change the color scheme so you can see and it'd be easier to tell <clears throat> but so on the server I am going to go to my network options and my setup tab and I'm gonna select um, server computer this is now broadcasting and looking for other computers and um, it's not going to see any because uh, I actually have not tried to connect any but now it should be in server mode and sometimes you have to restart uh, Darkroom Pro to get that to work so the next thing you want to do is um, you want to go to the actual computer through your network I'm going to show you how to do that Right click on this PC, go to properties, and this is your computer name right here. Oh, that's my computer name for the server, but that's where you would find your computer name. And then go to file explorer, type in slash slash, and then paste that in. And that's gonna take you to the computer you're already on through the network. But <clears throat> there's a couple things that you wanna look for here every so often I'll run into an issue with uh, the users folder being in here and sometimes cause an issue where uh, it makes it more difficult to get to this is the folder we actually want to access so if you see a users folder in here and you don't need it I would go ahead and toss it or not toss it I'm sorry uh, just unshare it so you go to properties um, please do not delete your user folder you want unshare it. <clears throat> so um whoops <clears throat> so that folder there's the users folder the one that we're looking for is oops it's going to be under public public documents and this is where it is by default uh if you've moved it it'd be in a different location but you want to make sure that folder that you're using is named photos with a capital p and an s at the end so Go to properties and you have sharing right here you want to make sure that it's shared if you don't that's if you don't see it under here so you should see the photos folder here um 
Next thing that you want to check on on the server, and this is just double checking a few things. Uh, right click on network and go to properties and advanced sharing settings. Um, I'm on a private network, so network discovery is turned on and printer file sharing. And then for all networks, I have it set to turn on sharing. Anybody has access, uh, my network's pretty locked down. You just want to make sure that you have some sort of password and somebody's just not plugging into your network. Uh, but if you're using Wi-Fi, make sure you have a, a good encryption. Um, turn off uh, password protecting. You, you can leave it on. It just means you have to type in the password whenever you log in. So those are the settings. And then the last thing is um, your Windows firewall. You'll want to make exceptions for Darkroom to com communicate through. Um, one easy way to find out if that is an issue is just disable the firewall in Windows. Um, Let's see. Uh, so if it's not connecting, and we haven't gotten there yet, but if it's not connecting, turn the firewall off and then see if it connects. And then if it does, turn it back on and make an exception for Darkroom. So. So what we want to do is copy that right there. Now we're going to switch over to the client and this is where we're going to log in. So I'm going to set it to a client computer, manually specify the, uh, the name or you can use IP address. And then here, once again, you might need to restart the client or the server, um, to get some of these, uh, to make things active. So I'm going to first let's start with just restarting core or the client and see if that allows me to connect and there we're good. So if that didn't, the next thing I would do is then go into pro restart pro and then restart core again. But as of right now, I am logged into, um, the I'm logged in as a client. So, <coughs> excuse me. If I switch over to pro, I should now see that image upside down. So that lets me know that everything's syncing up. If I create an order on client, then it will create the order on the, the server and vice versa. Any uh, images that are captured are going to show up. So <clears throat> if you have um, multiple clients, one thing that's uh, a pretty good idea, this is just um, from experience. If you create a new catalog, We'll call it cool event. You can then create sub catalogs. Cam one or station one. And that way it's a little easier to stay organized uh, for your different stations. So if anybody runs into an issue, you know, you know a little bit better where to look. And then under there you can divide by even subdivide into times. So it's easier to find some things. So we're going to stop right there for now. And that's just an initial setup. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can connect the uh, printer to your client computer so that you can then make sales and send orders. The server will process it, but it's gonna send it back to the printer on the client. And how to avoid, if you have multiple clients, making sure that it goes to the right printer um, so it doesn't go to the, another printer on a different client. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.
Thanks again for watching. Here are a couple of videos that YouTube thinks that you might enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, but more importantly, if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about, comment below this video and I'll do my best to add it as a future video. I'll see you in the next one.